Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about verifying trig identities. I've written some of the main uh, the main identities down on the sheet of paper. They're called the Pythagorean identities. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Tan squared plus 1 is secant squared. Cotan squared plus 1 is cosecant squared. These are treated as facts, things you can use. You don't have to prove. Uh, I've also written down cosecant is 1 over sine, some of the other main um, uh, ways you can define secant and cotangent and also tangent and cotangent in terms of sine and cosine. So we're going to use all these facts and verify trig identities. And we'll just start with something that's fairly simple, like this. Um, the goal here is to take um, this, take one side and show it's equal to the other side. Um, so I always recommend you start on the most complicated side. That's clearly the left side. We're going to just do um, the distributed property here. Cosine squared times 1 is just cosine squared, and then cosine squared times tangent squared is, is that. Um, and uh, I know that tangent can be written in terms of sine and cosine. So I'm going to go ahead and choose to write this as a fraction, cosine squared over 1. And then tangent is the same as sine over cosine. So this is going to be sine squared over cosine squared. The reason for writing it like this is so that you can possibly cancel out something here we can cancel out the cosine squareds. And that leaves us with cosine squared plus sine squared. And now if you remember from your identities, cosine squared plus sine squared actually equals 1. So we're going to take that cosine squared plus sine squared and say that equals 1. And we're done. We've shown what we needed to show. A similar problem might be this one. Uh, another kind of distributed property. This time we're using FOIL uh, to uh, uh, simplify. And we're going to start with 1 times 1. The outers are cotan squared times 1, so that's going to be cotan squared. The inners are minus cosine squared times 1. So minus cosine squared. And then finally, minus cosine squared times cotan squared. Mix that. We want all this to equal 1. Uh, so we're going to have 1. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and convert to sines and cosines to see if that will help me cancel things out. Cotan is cosine over sine, so cotan squared is this. Minus cosine squared over 1. Uh, this is going to be cosine squared over 1. Cotan squared is actually cosine squared over sine squared. So we've, uh, we're getting there, but we've got a, a lot on our hands here. Um, and uh, so let's see what we can do. Um, if I could maybe multiply uh, this denominator by sine squared, uh, sine squared and secant squared. If I could multiply this denominator by sine squared right here, um, I could have sine squared in all my denominators. So let's do that. We're going to have 1 plus cosine squared over sine squared. And then cosine squared, sine squared over sine squared. And then uh, we have cosine squared, cosine squared. That could be cosine to the fourth, but I'm just going to write it as that. And uh, I'm noticing that I do have cosine squared in every single term. So I'm going to go ahead and just take that out. Sine squared's on the bottom. Cosine squared's up top. This is going to be 1. That's going to be minus sine squared and then minus cosine squared. And I'm trying to make things cancel out. Um, I noticed that um, 1 minus sine squared uh, could actually be cosine squared. So let me just show you why. Recall sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. And if you want 1 minus sine squared, you could take away sine squared from both sides. 
and get cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. So this right here, this right here is actually equal to cosine squared. I'm going to put a box around there. So you get 1 plus cosine squared times, this is going to be cosine squared minus cosine squared all over sine squared. And cosine squared minus cosine squared is zero. So zero times this is zero. And we get just one plus zero, and that equals one. And that was what we wanted to show. So that works out. That was a tough one. That was a tough one. Uh, let's try another one. Um, this one uh, involves two fractions. Uh, I want to add them together because I can see over here we just have one term here that we just have, uh, we have two terms. And uh, in the same spirit of a moment ago, uh, I saw 1 minus sine squared is equal to cosine squared. I'd like to kind of make this like a, a 1 minus sine squared. And there's a little trick you can do to make that happen, which is called multiply by the conjugate. Multiply that by 1 minus sine. The conjugate of the same two terms with the opposite sign. And so we're going to have 1 minus sine here, or cosine. Uh, if you FOIL this out, 1 times 1 is 1, minus sine and plus sine cancel out. Then you just have minus sine times sine, so that's 1 minus sine squared. And then up top you have cosine times 1 plus sine. And uh, this 1 minus sine squared, just like we saw before, if you take away sine squared, you just get cosine squared left over. So this is going to be 1 minus sine over cosine, and then cosine times 1 plus sine doesn't change, and this becomes cosine squared. Um, one of the cosines reduces out, so you get 1 minus sine over cosine unchanged, cosine down below, and 1 plus sine up top. And now we have the same cosine in the bottom. So you can say cosines in the bottom, 1 minus sine plus 1 plus sine. All that goes together. The sines cancel out, and you just get 2 over cosine. And don't forget, if the cosine's in the bottom, it's like having secant on the top. So that is what we wanted. The trick here, if, if you, all my identities have squares in them, so if you don't have squares in your sines and cosines, you might want to try and do something that'll get you squares. And multiplying by the conjugate is a great trick that you can sometimes use.